Um, there's a couple people here who I am absolutely, uh, check the list to make sure who's listening, absolutely not keen to give questions to. I do not want to be in a situation where we're allowing black, lo black locks to, to be asking us. Um, so, um, yeah, that's about where we're at. The only non-government funded media on that call, our friends at Black Locks, were banned from asking any questions. It was a hot mic moment here to talk with us about it is our friend Spencer Fernando, who himself, like us and like Black Locks, is one of the few media companies in Canada that does not take money from Trudeau. Spencer, great to see you again. I'll, I'll go through some of the details here, but are you surprised that government agencies have blacklists of folks that they just don't talk to, that they ban, that they shut out? I'm not surprised because we've been caught up in that ourselves, even in the leaders' debates. But the Bank of Canada, that's supposed to be a pretty nonpartisan place, isn't it? Yeah, you'd think so, although we've certainly seen them become more and more partisan and you know interventionist and kind of backing up big spending liberal policies, right? I mean, every time the government goes into more of a deficit, they kind of make it easier for them to get away with it, right? They keep interest rates low, they print more money, they spread all the money around. And so it kind of dulls the pain of these policies. So really, it's not surprising that they would be, you know, not wanting to talk to people who would actually, actually ask them tough questions, in large part because I don't think they really want the public to make the connection between what they're doing and what people are seeing in terms of prices and shortages, right? They don't want people to make that connection. They just want them to blame, oh, it's just the big, mean capitalist companies all there to blame. The government has nothing to do with it. Don't worry about us. So certainly they wouldn't want any tough questions. Yeah. You know, it's not just that they were blacklisting uh, Holly Doan and Blacklocks. It's the reporters they were favoring because these reporters were so, you know, uh, interwoven with the government. They basically said to the government, what do I write? I want to quote to you from uh, Blacklocks. And this is, so like I say, this is a Zoom call where the microphones are on because the Bank of Canada, they don't really, they're not aware that reporters are already on the call. So they think they're talking amongst themselves. And and I'll, I'll read to you in a moment what they said about Black Locks, who are the good guys. But here's what they said about a Bloomberg reporter. Bloomberg, of course, the big financial uh, news agency. Michael Bloomberg was its founder. Here's what they said about a Bloomberg reporter named Theo Argitis. They said, Theo Argitis gave me a call just to sort of do the, hey, what's my lead here? You know, as a former colleague of mine. And lead, spelled mm -hmm. M-E-D-E, is the media yeah term for the lead sentence, the, the breaking news, sum it up for me in one sentence. So you have Bloomberg calling up the bank spin doctors and saying, okay, can you basically tell me what I should write? So they, because we're old friends and we're all in the same club. So they'll, they'll do business with Bloomberg because that just repeats Trudeau propaganda. But the one reporter on the call who doesn't take Trudeau money, Blacklocks, they won't even talk to. That's, I guess that's very unsurprising, isn't it? Yeah, it just shows much of the media has become literally an extension of the government propaganda apparatus, right? Normally, the Bank of Canada, where the government would have to put out a press release and actually, you know, there's there's transparency in that. The, the government certainly has a right to share information, but it should be shown that it's from the government. So you know what the bias is and that it's likely propaganda, that it serves the interests of those in power. But when you have obviously Bloomberg saying, "Oh yeah, well just uh, just tell us, uh, you know, kind of what the what we're going to say about this," well then it kind of hides it from people, right? Because people will read an article thinking, "Okay, I'm reading a journalist's opinion, or I'm reading their analysis of events," when it's really just something that the Bank of Canada wants people to read, but without being that honest about it. So I think. You know, it's not surprising that the Bank of Canada would try to do that. I, I think, you know, politicians are, are pleased to try to buy up uh, the media and make it just an extension of the government. But the rest of us should be pretty disturbed to see that. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day. Then I interview an interesting guest and then I read my hate mail. You got to subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.